times when people we love most, whether it be friends, family, or someone we've fallen in love with, it all hurts the same way. When that person disappears off the face of this earth and goes quiet, when there is no reply or response, no answer to explain where they have gone, what they have done, it can be painful and it can hurt within. Sometimes it can make us doubt ourselves. Did we do something wrong? Was it something that was said or suggested? But often that is not the case because there are numerous reasons to possibly explain what happened to them. However, though, at times, what we must not forget is there are much darker reasons which may have caused them to disappear. Maybe they were in danger. Maybe they were being watched. Anything is possible. Unfortunately, quite a few of the times when that stuff is in play, we don't always find out what happened to the person. Now, I'm going to share with you a personal experience of somebody I once knew who then just disappeared out of nowhere. As far as I know, I have not heard from them, no contact whatsoever. And as far as online presence goes, by online definition, they have gone missing from the internet. Who knows what's happened? But I will share with you the characteristics, the key events and timeline leading up to the dark disappearance. Now, the individual in question, known as Mosaic Michelle. I will call her Michelle. Now, Michelle, I don't know how old she was, ranging probably 28 to 36 years of age. She resided in Florida and I believe was a waitress at some restaurant. Now Michelle was interested in the M cave and the disappearance of Kenny Veach. And that's how I came across her. She was almost a day one viewer, commenting on a range of my videos with all kinds of opinions. Now, over time, I did get to know her better and learn about certain issues and problems she once faced. But we'll get to that later. Now, in addition to Michelle, her personality seemed good. She seemed like a normal person. Times funny. Could take a joke. Messed around. The use of emojis all kinds of interactive behavior, what you'd see online. Additionally, she was supportive, not of the mystery being solved, but my channel and the work I did on videos. She'd often encourage me to keep making them and expand on a range of ideas and theories. Additionally, she was very interactive in the comment section, often leading to all kinds of replies, responses, not just to me, but other people, as well as providing their own theories and also sightings of what they have seen at times, where it's paranormal, UFOs, strange footage, which she was going to show me, but unfortunately never did. Now, aside from that, Michelle's involvement in the mystery did reach out to other people involved, such as Liberia Sean at the time. Michelle participated in live streams on Sean's channel, leaving all kinds of comments and interacting with other viewers. An awesome thing to see. Mosaic Michelle, back in the house. 
remember you from last time. Thank you for being here. I just almost got hit by lightning filming this awesome storm outdoors. Whoa. Familiar, yo. Hello. Are you here? Warlike Wrath. I don't know if he's here yet. Here he is. I am. He says, hey. Oh, we got a, we got a, something, we got sparks flying between people. Why did my tags not work? <clears throat> now at the time of the live streams, when getting to know her a little bit better, as said, she seemed just fine. But one thing to take to note, she did say about life being kind of tough in recent time. Who knows what that could be? I don't know myself at the time, but maybe it could have played a factor building up to the inevitable. But aside from that, it was interesting how two people who at the time didn't really know each other were in the same place. And even an additional person as well in the same live stream, who in months later I got to know very well. It's very interesting how people can be put together at random places at random times. Sometimes there is a meaning behind it. Now, as I got to know Michelle, she was a good friend, as I said. She was helpful, not in just ideas, not in just giving responses and replies to other people, answering questions and maybe providing material from time to time. She became very helpful and also supportive during the time of the threats and the cryptic messages. Now, all this occurred back in 2020, and it was at the time when I just recently uploaded the mystery of the M-shaped cave along with the keyhole, the looking eye, the spying eye. I was suggesting the possibility that there was something there because it looked very odd. And just after posting that video, not long after, I received some very strange messages. At first, there were simple warnings and threats, like you would see anywhere. But over time, as I previously demonstrated in past videos, they evolved and advanced. They became more technical and somewhat more in depth, more cryptic. I don't know why. I don't know what their intention was. At the time of receiving them, Michelle took them somewhat serious. Me? I was kind of on the fence. I wasn't too sure what to make of it, whether it was a joke or if it was serious, but I thought it was important to cover and document just in case. At the time, Michelle was very helpful, as I said, and also supportive. She was concerned. She showed worry at times, and it reinforced and highlighted the type of person she was, demonstrating empathy and understanding. Maybe it was due to past experience, but we'll get to that shortly. At the time, Michelle helped by stepping in and asking whether she could help solve the weird codes. Now these codes ranged. First, very simple, binary then became more awkward. Digits replaced with letters. Letters reversed. Spaces. Missing noughts. The lot. Very weird. Now, I didn't know how to solve it at the time because I've never experienced anything like this before. How would I know? What would I do? Michelle took over and she did solved them successfully, two at least. One of which, simple binary, but still took some time to manually solve and rearrange. And then the other one, much more in depth. It took her 12 hours, all that time to solve it, rearranging it and transitioning onto the next message format. It ranged from binary 
rearranging it all into Morse code and then into a completely different language and then eventually revealing the final message from the person who was threatening me. Now, one thing to make note of, whether it be a personality trait, just who they are, how they communicate. At times, there were moments of urgency by Michelle in the comment section on YouTube, especially during the time of the codes, threats and warnings, when she ever figured something out, found a clue or solved something. She was quick to message me. She was enthusiastic and at times serious. She wanted to let me know as soon as possible whatever was up. That's a key note to make note of. Now, aside from that, eventually the messages, the warnings and threats did ease off. And one of the suggestions by Michelle just before that was in agreement with me in the sense of continuing to make these videos and to give coverage of it. Now, at this point in time, I was already in contact with her more than ever, as it was all via email. That's how we we're able to solve the codes and exchange images. In addition, another key point to make, aside from being supportive, she did share the odd picture of herself, funny pictures of her dog and whatnot. Whether that was done in a sense of being playful, funny, or just simply helping me whilst making the videos I'm making, showing some form of support, it all linked to that idea and impression that despite ongoing things, previous encounters, it was not interfering in her friendship with me. Everything seemed fine at the time. Now, we need to have a quick look at the possibilities to why she was so understanding, but also serious when it came to the codes. I'm gonna take you on a brief backstory of their past encounters. Now, the information I'm going to share with you will be brief in detail, out of respect for Michelle's privacy and safety. And additionally, I don't want to go against any guidelines or rules. Now, Michelle being in contact with her via email, I did learn more about her. Likes, dislikes, funny things, funny moments, but also bad moments, unpleasant experiences, some very strange ones indeed, as well as sharing certain similarities with me, such as seeing the devil. Now for her, it was in her sleep. She also had times of sleep paralysis similar to me. So maybe with having similarities and things in common, it helped solidify that understanding and empathetic bond in that friendship. Now, aside from that, some of the unpleasant experiences she encountered, such as some kind of controlling relation with a previous person in the past. It wasn't pleasant and there was some form of arguments. And I guess that form of control over the other person was kind of similar to the time what I experienced with the codes. How there was that mysterious person out there who had the leverage upon me with these codes, warnings and threats. And similar to Michelle, Maybe at a time of an unpleasant experience, she encountered that too. Now, aside from that controlling relation with a previous person, she also encountered some very creepy people at times, whether it be the neighborhood, the town she resided in. People who were almost psychopathic, didn't care, no remorse, no emotion, nothing. And there was one result which led to a quite 
and emotional time I will not mention. Additionally, there was another experience she did encounter at one point at time, whether it be the place she worked at or someone she knew nearby. There was one encounter which psychologically really did impact her, and it was briefly touched upon in one of Sean's live streams, and it was regarding her Instagram account being hacked. She was saying how she couldn't recover it or get it back. Must be locked out. Guess the password was changed. Why though? Who would do that? Maybe someone she knew. Now, as I got to learn more about her at the time via email, she did bring up the point about one hacker who was also a real life stalker. Someone she knew. An individual who was somewhat untouchable. No one could take them down. No one could do anything. Like, they were invincible. She, at the time, unfortunately, felt helpless. She tried reaching out to people. They could only do so much. Now, it is unknown to what happened down the line, whether it persisted, whether it returned worse. I believe it did ease off at some point. At the time of talking to her, it did not happen. It happened previously, but could it have returned? And that's what caused her to disappear for once and for all online. Who knows? Now, as far as the stalking and hacking goes, I was unable to find any profiles of Mosaic Michelle online, such as the Instagram and other accounts elsewhere. Unless maybe you can find something. If you do, let me know in the comments section. But as far as communication went with me, it was not impacted. She was open, she was honest, she could still have a laugh. Maybe this M Cave mystery in Kenny Beach helped as a distraction. As far as communication goes one on one, she would reply as soon as possible. Even though busy at times and working, there was still time to communicate, whether it was early in the day or late at night. But the beginning of the lack of communication was not abrupt. In fact, it was eased over time. Now, aside from being busy with work, she did talk about being involved as an artist and taking part in projects. And I believe one of them was to paint or spray paint some kind of mural at a place within Florida. I don't know if it was completed or not, but it was on her to-do list. I don't know if it was some kind of deal made with someone, voluntary, who knows. But she was creative and had interest in a range of stuff. Now, as far as communication issues, at times there were internet problems and that led to emails not being read or delayed or not sent, missent. And I was wondering at the time, hmm, I wonder what's going on. Considering how she was originally with the replies, it did ease off and I was wondering, was everything okay? Now at times, with power outages and I guess that did not help either and additionally running out of credit meant she couldn't use her phone at times especially with no data so all those factors made sense it was understandable to why communication was lacking at times but it was not an issue nor was it for that long if you understand me I did send and follow up with an email apologizing for sending numerous emails because I wanted to share with them 
new findings and new ideas with the mystery and also asking how they were. At the time, her reply was along the lines of, no problem, you can send as many emails as you want. I actually like it. After hearing that reply, it seemed everything was fine. And the fact that they appreciated the communication is as if they wanted it to continue, right? And so came that final day of contact with Michelle. It was during morning time and she must have replied to a previous email sent by me. And she just simply said, hey, I'm busy right now. I'm in the stores. I heard there's a hurricane or a storm coming my way to this town. I don't know when it's going to hit, but I'll talk to you later. Bye. After that message was sent to me, I have not heard from her since. Ten months on, not a single email, reply or comment on YouTube. There are many factors which could play a role in her disappearance from online. Now, key factors to consider. Why not the storm itself? A hurricane can cause damage, injury, and sometimes it can be fatal, caught up in it. What's the possibility that when Michelle was in the store and maybe leaving, returning home, or onto work, it struck and she was impacted? We're not to know for sure. Now at the time, I did check on the news or as best I could and there was no report of a storm or anything serious. No injury, no fatalities, nothing. So it couldn't have been that bad. Another key point could be the virus. At the time, back then during a the live stream or so, I believe she was commenting saying how they were going through the second wave of the virus. Maybe where she lived, nearby, the cases were bad, maybe she got affected, and unfortunately, seriously, I don't know, but during the time and current events, it could have played a part, you never know. Aside from that, more serious, darker explanations could be the stalker, or people that held grudges against her because there were odd encounters, as said, she faced. Maybe that stalker, the hacker, returned and finished the job. Whether it be fatal, kidnapping, could be anything. You never know what people are capable of. But whatever the factor is, the fact remains the behaviour by Michelle was not normal. Based off what I knew her, how she was online, how she appeared, and how she communicated, there was a big contrast. She would never do something like that and go quiet. Now, yes, it's easy to say, well, you shouldn't think like that. It's naive to, because how often do we actually know the person we're talking to, especially when it's online, they could be a completely different person in real life with a completely different identity, personality, whatever. But still, based off how she was, I couldn't imagine she would be something like that. Now, yes, there's always possibility we can't forget. But even that reply in a previous email about actually liking to communicate and just appreciating all the messages. It's not like she wanted to end things abruptly or couldn't be bothered. None of that problems. So when she did go completely quiet and just not a single message whatsoever, not a hi or a bye later on, 
makes you think something definitely odd happened. Maybe we'll never know, because 10 months on, there's not been an answer. Now, if you personally know Michelle, whether it be in contact with her face-to-face, online, maybe you once had some kind of chat with her, if you know something, or you saw a different side to them, or any information whatsoever, providing it's within YouTube guidelines, feel free to leave a comment down below. Because I do believe this is definitely a disappearance case as far as the online aspect goes. Because even if they were busy with stuff, it shouldn't take 10 months of no contact whatsoever to find out, right? Additionally, the other link that can be made and we do not forget about yet another disappearance case when it comes to the M Cave mystery. Anyone that was really enthusiastic or hands on was impacted in some way. And I don't mean everyone, but people like Sean, Robin, Kenny himself, and even Michelle, who was hands on virtually. They were all impacted in some way from the looks of it. They all disappeared or at least changed in behaviour or simply went quiet. These links do seem to show up. Now, me personally, I cannot remember if Michelle was spiritual or if she was religious, but you never know. If you know, let me know. Now, unfortunately, at the end of the day, although no resolve, I did want to share this experience and story with you as it still does link to the M Cave and Kenny Veach mystery.